So there's the word, the word of the day, bro. Well, didn't you get like the great white uh, award? Huh? <laughs> this thing, man, this thing is here. Actually, it's like the heaviest, heaviest uh, award I've ever picked up in my life. But it's oh, no kidding it's old thing, man. <laughs> Humongous. So it's called the Killer Whale Award. But there it God, is, I the Killer Whale Award. Yeah. yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Road to 10,000. I got my guy Juan with us, of course. And today we've got, I don't know, I don't know. This is like a, this has to be like a walking legend kind of deal here. We got Mr. David Cohen with us from Keller Williams. What's up, buddy? I'm good. How about yourself? How are you doing? doing good, Thanks for man. having me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Thanks so for Juan, why me. don't you uh, entertain the audience here with, with uh, what David has accomplished so, David, correct me if I'm wrong, but you successfully closed $260 million last year worth of real estate. Is that accurate? Uh, I did, yes. Yes, about two, $260 million bucks. Yeah, yeah. David, you, you are aware that's more real estate that you sold in one year than people sell in a lifetime, right? It's the most real estate I've sold in, in, in one year so far. So, uh, keyword so far, right? What did you do the year before that? The year before that was 110. Okay. So was it like one huge deal that really you know, catapulted? My business is very niche, right? I kind of took everything I've learned from other multifamily brokers that I've worked with in the past. And when I went on my own, kind of took this work smarter, not harder kind of motto. Realized that, that I don't have to go do 20, 30, 30 deals a year. You know, I, I could go do three, four, five and make the same, if, if not much more than, than I would be busting my ass to, to, and breaking my back to go to go do that. So again, was it like one massive deal there that got you over the hump from 110 to one? I mean, 110 is crazy as it is. So it was but. two. Yeah, it was, it, was two, it was two deals. Last year, what changed the game for me last year is I went ahead and sold 100 and it was one building for 130 million. Mm -hmm. And then it was, an, it was another one for about 100 million. So that kind of like really broke broke the barriers and really opened my doors to playing around with a lot more things. Yeah, that's on Brandon Street. Yeah. That deal was was my first experience of a private owner and an institutional buyer. You know, normally normally you're dealing with two two groups who do this thing every day. This one was not. That kind of taught me a, a lot of, uh, you know, and and not only was it was it you know a private buyer it was it was, uh, for example, yeah, and, and we're all in this business, right? When when you're dealing with with foreign buyers who own uh, not only just out of out of state, but out, you know they're out of the country, they live out of the country. You know, they feel that uh, they may they may you know know what they're doing a lot more than than others, right? So that kind of played a lot of part in it. But yeah, that that deal definitely uh, made me bulletproof, I would say. So, so David, what's it? What's the difference between brokering a deal with let's say thirty or forty units versus two hundred fifty plus? Is there a difference or? You know, there's definitely a difference. I, I would say it just depends on who you're dealing with more than anything, right? The 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 two the two sides that you're dealing with, and 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 number one, how much they trust you versus you know something like, hey, go list my building, and and you know the offers will come in and, and you'll sell it. A lot of these deals don't come together. Uh, you know, it, it takes prying open. You know what I mean? It's not just you know you cold calling and catching a a listing or a buyer that's open to selling, right? And, and they have a price ready in mind. They have uh, everything ready to go. And, and they're like, okay, here it is. Go go get me a buyer. You know what I mean? It's it's more of, no, I don't think so. And then check, checking in later. And then, you know, them slowly, slowly finding out information on why maybe uh, they can't sell and just hurtling those gaps like that. That seller, for example, told me on our first call, it was a cold call. Everything I do, it, it, that's why I, I was doing some research on Ricky too. I know you're big on cold calling. Everything I do is, is is cold calling. It's been like that. It'll probably never change. But, you know, just working this seller, I just re refied, it, refied it. So I have 70 million in debt that I just put on. And this was maybe about two months prior to, to us speaking. So I had to go find someone to do that and cover my fee and pay cash for the beautiful building. And, and uh, you know, here we are today. Nice, man. Yeah, it's just incredible, man, to hear this. So well, I, I guess it. how long does a deal like this take? Okay. So from start to finish, you cold called him. Give me, give me just the the Cliff Notes version here. I want to hear the, the the timeline of events, the story of this. Yeah, de definitely. So let's say uh, I I probably spoke to him for the first time in October, right? I, I left a message for his wife, actually. She came up as the owner of the building. Left this a message past for October. The... No, this is uh last October, okay, October of 2019, you know, leave a message for, for, for this woman. No idea. Probably chance. I'm not going to get a call back, probably get a call back from him six days later. 
It was kind of one of those. So, so, so we're already, you know, towards the end of October, mid October, the call was one of those phone calls of, Hey, I understand everybody's got a job, but you know, I'm calling you because I respect what you're doing, but, but no, thank you. The reason of the no, thank you was simply because of all the, you know, he just refied it. Uh, he's been on the fence of, of thinking about it. So, you know, I felt the call going down South really fast. So I kind of, you know, stuck my foot out there and just let him know, Hey, let's just hypothetically speaking, I find someone to give you a price you're okay with and to cover the debt. Uh, and to cover my fee, you know, would you be open to it? You know, that turned into, I don't know, why don't you see what you can get me from your client? Why don't you come back with a number and we'll see, you know, what we'll talk. So probably took me until November-ish, maybe 10th, 11th to go ahead and, uh, you know, get them a solid offer, an LOI from a client of mine. No financials, no nothing. You know, a lot of, a lot of everything that I do, it starts like this, right? Just in the blind. Um, and, and it's, it's not just a number thrown out there, obviously, right? These, these buyers are, are credible and own probably own in the area and do some research. So, uh, about a month it took me to, to get them something, uh, from my client that kind of, kind of, you know, got his engines going a little bit and he, he was able to, you know, he gave me basically all the financials and said, Hey, why don't you, why don't you see now best foot forward, what you can do. Went ahead and did that. Uh, he was still not okay with, with the price, you know, kind of didn't, didn't redline my LOI or anything, you know, didn't send anything back whatsoever. Just simply told me that he, he wasn't okay with it. Uh, so I, I had to choose, like, do I just let it go or do I try again? You know, we went ahead, we, me and my buyer looked at it together about two months in December, maybe, maybe first he goes ahead and sends me a, a red line. I send him a, a revised offer LOI for my client. And then he, he sends it back red line. And then this thing moves back and forth. I want to say we opened escrow on like December 9th uh, or December 10th. That whole process was supposed to end in February, right? You're thinking 60 to 90 days, um, typical for this, right? This one probably was took a little longer due to, due to uh, the debt that had to be assumed, but it, it got dragged on due to so many just, I wouldn't call them issues, but different things that would come up that you would have to you know, that basically changed the game for my buyer. And, and there were, there were probably about two or three times where they had to have a board meeting and decide, you know, do, do we move forward or, or do we not with this? Luckily for me, they, they, you know, every time they chose to do so. So I ended up closing escrow on April 25th. So that's so kind of, that's a, we're talking from, you said it was October. About Yeah. An initial phone call, October to April 25th is, is when everything was, was said and done. That was, that was the one thirty. That was the one thirty. Yeah. So months. literally, so so you 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 talk to the person for the first time, and then you close a hundred thirty million dollar deal six months later. Yeah, absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, definitely. that's freaking never, awesome. Never never seen the building with my own eyes. Never still been to there. this day. Still to this day, never been there. <laughs> um, never met the seller. Right. Uh, but, but, but you know what, what helps me, luckily I have those, uh, I have, you know, those clients that, that are willing to go to war with you. You know what I mean? So you, you need those people sometimes, sometimes, you know, you guys are, you guys got an, I'm sure you guys got an off market opportunity and you think it's good for a guy, you know, but, but seller doesn't want to give you anything. You, you need those guys that are willing to be like, you know what, let's put an offer in front of this guy. Let's do whatever it takes to see. And there may be nothing there, you know, but to see uh, if there's something there. You got to mm-hmm. try to un- uncover, right? Move the rock and see if, if there's some stuff under there. Uh, other, otherwise, you're just going to stop at no all the time. So it's a nine-figure deal. You close it in six months. Uh, you never even visit the property. So you're doing this all virtually. What do you do the day of the closing day? What, what's that like to close a, a nine-figure sales deal? I want to know, what, what, what did you do that night? <laughs> Uh, you know, that night, that night I didn't do anything because uh, had it been maybe like, like two years prior, I probably would have party, you know, no children, no nothing. But I went home and I hung out with my daughter, man. And I just, you know, you, you got the, the those moments where you're just looking at them and you're like, man, if you can only comprehend what your daddy just did, you know, but, but I just hung out with the fam, you know, it, it's, it. that was, uh, you know, like that, that was the biggest deal of my career so far. Um, but you know, prior to that, I have closed some, some, some pretty massive deals, you know, so, and, and it kind of, uh, I wasn't going to say, look, I'm not going to sit here and bullshit and, and, and say, oh, you know, close a $130 million deal. I didn't feel a damn thing, you know, inside fireworks are going off and, 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 you know, you just try to keep that composure of, of not, not taking that and going to get comfortable because that's when everything goes downhill. Right. Yeah. The fireworks don't last. 
You exactly. Know? Yeah. Tomorrow and, and, the sun comes up and it's like, here's another day. Exactly. That deal is over. Okay. Absolutely. That deal is over. Yeah. What am I going to do now? You know, that's like when I hit a a million dollars for the first year, that's all I ever wanted was to make a million dollars in a year. And as soon as I did it, I swear to you, it, 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 I didn't feel anything. I, I did not, it took so much to get to that point that by the time it got there, there was no, there, there, I mean, there wasn't even any fireworks to be honest with you. Cause I mean, like once the year, here's the thing, once the year went by where you're doing 80 grand a month, basically to make a million dollars, hell you'd, you'd been making that basically for several months, all the fireworks are gone by the time it's over with. And now it's the first of the year. And you think now, now you're like, Oh, I got to do all this over again. <laughs> How not am I going to do this right? again? Yeah. Not to mention your cost of living. has probably gone up with your, with your 80 K a month. And, and you know, you it's know, like okay. You talk about two years before, that would have been you. That was me back in 2002, three and four when I made a million dollars back then as a 22 year old. Yeah. I bought houses, Cadillacs, Hummers, everything under the sun. <laughs> yeah. My cost of living went way up, but I learned my lessons back then. So this time around, 2017 was the first year I had a mill again. And uh, I, uh, no, I was completely, I was very conservative the second time around. So, you know, that's what it takes though, right? That's yeah. sometimes, sometimes that's just what it takes. I mean, I, you know, my first, first big check, uh, you know, doing, doing one deal was, well, it was a $200,000 check for one building. Fucking went to go blow it all. I was like maybe 22 years old, 21 years old. Um, but, but it, it you know, it, and then it just, it, it takes, you know, you, there's beauty in the struggle, you know, that's why I, I, I try to tell people. And it, it, sometimes, um, you know, look, you, you don't, great things are, are, are not done when, when someone does something once, right? It's, they're really done. And, 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 it, and it really means something when you do it once, lose it all and go do it again. That's, that's really when, uh, when there's something to be said about, about who you are and, and, and what you, what you can do, right. And what you're capable yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody can have a, have a, get a lucky, have a lucky day. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody can have exactly. a lucky day. Exactly. And shoot, shoot or shoot. Right. So you just gotta, just gotta, you know, Keep, I refer to going. myself as, as a, I refer, I refer to myself as like a, like a high energy turtis, you know, like I'm the turtis. I'm going to win the race. I'm not as slow as the turtis, you know what I'm saying? I'm right. I'm probably right in the middle right there, but I'm going to win the race when it comes down to me being, you know, 45, 55, 65 years old, I am going to win the race. The race is mine to lose basically. Well, that's cool, man. How long have you been selling? How long have you been an agent? Uh, I've been an agent for probably about six or seven years. Um, did you start out in residential or did you go straight to commercial? So I did start out in residential, but when I started out in residential, I was not my own agent. I was, uh, you know, my, my uncle's a, a big agent in California. I was kind of, this is, this is probably, you know, REO time. So I don't know, 2008, 2007, you know, I'm just, I was like the REO manager. I'm driving to properties, taking pictures, reeking, things yeah. like that. Um, went ahead and got my license and, and tried, but I realized it wasn't for, it wasn't for me. You know what I mean? I, it wasn't for me simply because it, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't loving what I was doing. You know what I mean? Not, not because, um, you know, it, 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 it rubbed me the wrong way or anything. It just, I don't know. I couldn't find passion in, in doing it, you know, and going to, uh, know driving to open houses or sitting open houses and driving it to show properties and you know you know how it is in the in the beginning right you're you got one buyer and you're showing them millions of homes uh you know and they could not write or they just end up going with another agent and then you just kind of get bummed out um but it just it just wasn't for me not until maybe 2000 2013 2014 uh did i jump ship and and go start to sell multifamily apartments uh, right. I had gone, yeah, definitely yeah, you know, gone yeah. gone through uh gone through probably uh you know a tough breakup at the time, which I'm sure does, you know does a, does a lot of people. And uh, and I was like, man, I got to go find something I like to do because otherwise I'm just gonna fucking sit here and do nothing. Um, so you were kind of like floundering on residential. Um, absolutely. And basically, your uncle had you pretty much running around doing all the bottom of the barrel stuff. So you didn't really like get to like the good side of residential even right you just absolutely not and and, yeah. and, and it, it, it a lot of it had to do with who i was at, at the time right I, w I wasn't worried about um going to make money i was worried about going to hang out with my friends and party and and 
you know, waiting, looking at the clock and waiting for 5 p.m. to come or 6 p.m. to come around so I can bounce and, and go. So most of the them. people I know that do commercial, um, you know, it seems like, you know, everything's riding on a couple deals and, you know, everything seems a little bit high stress, right? It seems like a lot of those guys I know that do apartment complexes and stuff. I mean, you, you, you totally seem the opposite of this, but the most of the guys I know, they're kind of, you know, it seems like they lose a few years of their life, <laughs> you know, I would imagine you know, I see them every day dealing, dealing with the, the, the commercial side, you know, riding on a couple deals, um, you know, uh, how long the deals take to develop. I mean, I'm sure they, if they heard you did one for one thirty in six months, they'd probably flip. <laughs> but, um, I mean, how do you, I mean, for the people out there who, cause I, cause I have, I have agents, like I talk to agents who, like tell me they're getting into commercial or they want to get into commercial. Like, like what, it, what is the first step and how do you deal with, cause it takes so much longer. Let's take the $130 million one out of there. I mean, being real here, commercial deals take a lot longer than a residential deal. Once you go under contract, especially, and that's where our, everything kind of gets a little stressful because now everything's riding on this deal under contract. There's a lot of due diligence and there's a lot of things that can go wrong. A lot of different uh, hands, a lot of different people involved in the deal. You could probably be dealing with a lot of egos and different things. So like what, what would you say to somebody who wants to transition from residential to commercial? What's the first steps and how do you deal with the fact of the, the longevity of these deals and how long it actually takes to transpire? You know, a, a lot of times when, when someone comes to me and they're like, hey, I, I want to do commercial real estate, right? Especially sell apartment buildings or whatnot. My first answer to them is, is go find someone who does it well, right? And is willing, is willing to take you under their wing. And when, when I say that, right, I don't mean, you know, a guy who's killing it and, and has like 100 people calling for him and, and, you know, you're just supposed to bring him deals and, and he'll close them and give you 10, 15% of whatever. I mean, you know, go find someone who's really doing it, who, who maybe doesn't even have a team and is willing to just give you a shot. You know, that, that's how I started. Um, and because, because I was there and, and I feel that kind of propelled me, you know, it's like someone, if someone comes to work with you, right. Uh, fresh off, fresh, just walks in. I mean, I mean, they're going to excel 10 times faster than, than, you know, these kids signing up to a brokerage and trying to, and trying to um, work things by themselves. Uh, so, I mean, that's my first answer is, is always go find someone who does it well uh, and is willing to take you under their wing and and, and allow you to uh, you know build relationships with them or use their relationships to close deals, um, and 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 then in regards to you know to to doing those those longer deals, I mean you have to with the deals taking longer. You in the beginning you have to pick and choose what you're going to work on, what's worth your time and what's not. Right? There's there's deals that I do in two three weeks, but they're not even ten million dollar deals. They're one million dollar deal, two million dollar deals. You know so. Um, I think it's about just having the balance of knowing when to go, uh, you know, when to go hunt for whales and, and, and when, when to, when to do um, everyday business is, is what really changes the game because you, you could go hunt for whales every day and, and, and miss all the time. And then you have nothing all year long. There you um, go, man. There you go. I, the, 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 there's the word, the word of the day, bro. Well, didn't you get like the, the, the great white, uh, uh award huh <laughs> this thing man this thing is here actually it's like the heaviest heaviest uh award i've ever picked up in my life but it's oh no kidding old thing man <laughs> humongous though it's called a killer whale award but there it god, is I, the killer whale award yeah, yeah thank god i didn't uh i didn't come back on a plane and i drove because it was right here in carlsbad otherwise i would have to leave that thing but um, yeah, I, I, so I, I've got that, uh, that award twice. I got it once in 2017 for doing a, um, it was a $59 million deal in the Valley, uh, in the San Fernando Valley, uh, which in Burbank, uh, specifically speaking. So like where all Disney studios and stuff like that is, it was 145 unit apartment building. Um, and then again in 2019 for, for, uh, that, that one up North in San Jose, um, yeah, it's cool. I mean, look for for me for me it's 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 a sport, right? Because no one at no one at Keller Williams is doing is is doing uh, or prides himself on doing or even even tries to do those, those kind of deals, right? When I go speak at these commercial events for Keller Williams or go talk, um, sometimes I have to spend like you know three four nights 
coming up with, with things to talk about because we just don't speak the same language. You know what I mean? Me, me and the rest of the agents there. And, and um, you know, it, it's, it's a beauty though, because it, de it definitely inspires a ton of people, especially younger people. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I just turned 30, uh, maybe in January, I just turned 30. So uh, I, you know, a lot of the attraction that comes to me are the younger guy. I mean, these days I'm even on in this, in this business, you know what I mean? Everybody else is 18, 19, fresh, just got their license. And, and I feel like I just, I'm just out of that ship that everybody's catching right now with the social media and the, you know, and YouTube and stuff like that. I mean, you know, I grew up listening to music, right? If, if you could tell me that I could go, you know, just YouTube anything I want to know and, and, and probably, you know, just study that and become successful at whatever avenue I want to go through these days. I, I would have lived off, off of, off of things like listening to Ricky or, or stuff like that. Right. And just learning. Um, so I, I just missed, missed that wave, but um, you know, it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing. I definitely love to help people. I love to, you know, to talk to some people and tell them, Hey, uh, you know, this is how you do larger off market deals. Um, you know, cause I, I don't coach, um, whatsoever. There are maybe three or four people that I, let's call it lightly mentor. Uh, and, and when I see them go do a deal, you know, and bring home a check and they text me, Hey, it's the best feeling in the world. And I, I know that brings me a lot more, uh, you know, I uh, like to call it karma cash than, than, than cash ever will. So it's, uh, works out. So, so David, you're obviously inspiring a lot of agents who are looking to get into this. What's your day-to-day -day routine like? Because I could assume they're thinking this is you going out there touring some properties and boom, you're closing a sale, but you mentioned there's a lot of phone calling involved. What's the actual routine like of a commercial agent like yourself? So, so it's primarily prospecting, you know, whether that's mostly cold calling whether it's cold emailing, which is an avenue that I built for myself, which is how I've done these larger deals. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of these, a lot of these larger assets uh, that I brokered in pre like early in my career, I didn't have a license. You know what I mean? I would find the deals. I would, I would give them to my senior and he would close these deals. So, but that, you know, which built my, my prospecting because I would sit there from nine to six and just cold call. Um, eventually, you know, I got to a point where I realized you know, not everybody answers their phone, especially when you're, you know, you're dealing with receptionists, you're going through gatekeepers and, and that stuff, but, you know, name a CEO or, or business owner that doesn't check their emails, you know, probably not, not one. And if, and if there is one, he's probably not, you know, getting the most business done. So a lot of it, a lot of it is, is prospecting. Um, I'm only touring buildings when I got deals to do, you know, otherwise I'm wasting time. I need to go find some more deals to do. You know what I mean? Well, once we're in due diligence, um, and, and then I got to go to the building to go to inspections, you know, then I'll go see it. You know, if, if, if uh, unless obviously, you know, you're, you're in a situation where you're, where you, you got an offer in or something and then you got to go strengthen it and your buyer wants to go tour, you know, that, that does happen obviously. Um, but from nine to maybe, maybe 12, 1230, I'm prospecting for deals. I'm working on the deals that I have, um, from, you know, go, grab some quick lunch, which I eat in my office all the time normally I'll bring from home unless I have to go to a meeting. Um, and then the rest of the day, next hour is probably two hours is, is, you know, calls, emails, whatever, working on the, on the day and, and on the things I have to work on. And then it's back to, back to working on more deals. You know what I mean? Finding deals, um, wh whether it, whether it's the stuff that I own myself, uh, you know, finding deals for myself or finding deals for my clients, uh, you know, it's, it's to go ahead and, and, and find more deals. Yeah. It's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in my glass box, I like to call it, in my office, and, and I'm just, you know, trying to make the next one happen. So you're spending more than 50% of all your time just prospecting pretty much? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's... That's key. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I think, I think cold calling is, is you know, it's, it's going to be forever. It is forever. And, 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 and the quicker someone becomes great at it, the longer their business is going to last. Where do you find numbers for commercial owners? So I use, I use something called CoStar. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I use CoStar. Um, you know, a lot of the numbers that I do, obviously they go into my database from there over, over the years. And now it's from the database, but when I need something, I use CoStar. Uh, CoStar allows me to go ahead and, and, and look up whatever I want to specifically pin down, you know, today I'm going to call, you know, hundred to hundred units plus in, 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 Seattle, Washington from this, you know, built in 
from 1970 until 2010, you know, market rent, and it'll just pull up all that. Uh, and, and then, you know, one by one, you're chopping away. You know, a lot of my stuff these days are also um, specifically driven. So, you know, client of mine, like, let's say you guys give me a call. Hey, David, we, we, we have, we've had our eyes on, 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 you know, these 10 properties, go see if the owner would sell, you know, so then I'm, it's specific hunting for, for certain groups. I do a lot of that as well, but it all comes from CoStar. What do you do to stay in touch with your database? You know, you, you got to check it regularly. I have one assistant, right? So to stay in touch with my database, I have certain, like a CRM uh, that I use, if I'm not mistaken, it's called Rethink. Uh, and, and I want to say it's a new, it's like part of Salesforce, like a newer, new thing that Salesforce has got going on. But, um, you know, just try to stay disciplined, try to hit them, uh, you know, depending on what they tell me or whatever conversations, you know, are going on, try to touch them at least once a month, you know, maybe twice a month. Um, touch them how, know, touch them how. Oh, calling. Try, let's say, oh. let's say it's a no, for example, it depends. Look, you know, when someone tells you no you know, F off. And you know, when someone, when someone's no is you, you might be able to overturn that. So consistently calling, you know, wh whether it's, whether it's letting them know that I could probably do a little bit better than the number I, I shot them, you know, two months ago from my client, uh, just due to where my client is, maybe they're in exchange, maybe they have things, uh, you know, just money that they need to place because they're behind on stuff from the fiscal year, uh, which is a situation a lot of times with these bigger groups. Um, but a lot of times they're under the gun with exchanges, but whatever, whatever it takes. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? I know it's the guy's birthday. See a lot. Sp speaking of that though, a lot of the, the thing that makes me different, uh, or differentiates myself from most multifamily brokers is I'm extremely big on research, right? Before I call a guy or before I call an owner or, or a group or whatever, probably know everything about them, you know, from, from how, what they own, exactly what they own, where they own, who they are. Um, you know, a lot of times selling these bigger assets, you, you know, you, you do research on these, especially when they're private families or private owners that own these buildings, you find out some really odd, uh, odd inf and let's say cool information, you know, of, of just people, whether certain of them founded like, you know, old sports teams or, or they were, you know, pioneers of, of, of certain, let's call it, um, certain type of drugs and certain type of certain types of, uh, you know, states and cities. And, and it's just, you, you, it's, it's really cool. You know, it really, it really, it, but it, it really adds to the, to the value of like, you know, when I, I'm not supposed to be talking to this guy. Like I, I, you know, when I, when I was younger, even, even 10 years ago, eight, five years ago, I'm like, you know, here I am talking to talking to a you know a Chinese billionaire selling his his hundred thirty million dollar building like this you know wasn't supposed to be me um, so so it it really you know it it but it it all adds to the to the uh, to the excitement and to and to the adventure and to the story right when when you're done doing these kind of things. So you're just kind of filtering through your database, right? You're just calling people. You're just recalling people. You're filtering through your notes of uh, how the last conversations went and looking for little diamonds within your notes of the list that you have. And you're just basically recalling people over and over again. And you're also prospecting for new, new people to add to this database where you're just consistently running through it, calling people. And so this is on, in some kind of CRM rethink or whatever it is. Is this the only way you're, 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 are you, do you do any kind of direct mail, any kind of email marketing, any kind of social media, anything except for phone calls? You know, I, so, so aside from the phone calls, email marketing in a sense, right. But my email marketing is, is me asking an owner via email if they'd sell their building or if there's a price in mind that would get them to sell. Uh, I, I do not, when I close a deal, absolutely. You know, you, you close a deal, you, you, you know, I'll, I'll postcard everything around it all uh because look my day-to-day my -day deals are not you know 100 million 50 million right they're they're day-to-day -day deals in, in my business anywhere from from five to, to, to 15 million dollars um the only deals i start lately as of late the only deals that i put on my website are the larger ones because those are the clients that i kind of work with every day um but i i don't do any any mass marketing mm -hmm. i don't do um any crazy social media marketing uh, because a, a lot of, a lot of the guys that are going to come by the buildings that I have a passion for selling are not going to come 
from that, unfortunately. You know, yeah. People reach out to me. They reach out all the time and they say, hey, hey, get your engagement. And I'm like, you know, with well, it's all a different respect, kind of I'm business, offended. right? Exactly. exactly. Like, like, Absolutely. You're, like, your like your business, like your business is investor oriented, whereas you got you pick up 20 strong investors um, that are just going to buy from you over and over and over again. Right. Pretty much unlimited funds kind of thing. They're just going to buy anything that's a good deal. It's not like residential, whereas you got to do mass marketing to kind of keep the personal branding going to where when they think about, you know, cause they're going to, they're going to, they're going to sell an upgrade in every like five, six, seven years or whatever. Absolutely. So, you know, you got to do that to keep that ball rolling. But in your business, really, you're only dealing with like 10, 20, 30 clients that are constantly buying and selling. Right. Absolutely. So you don't have and to do I, the mass marketing thing. Cause I need, I need thousands of clients to keep my residential business going. You only need 50. Right. And yeah. And, and I mean, I'm sure at your level, your, your phone is ringing, right. But every, like the new people who are, who are getting in, you know, fresh, that's what they need to do to, to, to get to that level, right. Of, of your phone ringing. For example, me, you're exactly right. I, I've kind of built this niche to where it's maybe, maybe, you know, five large buyers, uh, you know, and, and then you get into the point where this is, this is fun money. This is not yeah. even, you know, this is like retirement fund money and, you know, and so it'll, it'll, it'll never end. And a lot of these things you do when you do it with these bigger guys, which is another, another reason why I kind of went that Avenue with these bigger institutional groups, they come back to you on the back end. Absolutely. When it's because they have to list, they're, they're going to have to, they don't have a choice, right? It's not like another broker is going to call them and be like, uh, Hey, I got a guy that's going to offer you this much. And they're just going to be like, okay, you know, well, David brought us a deal off market. Let's, we're just going to sell it with you, you know? And, and, it, and if they do, get offered some ridiculous number in some scenario like that, my phone's going to ring and they're going to be like, Hey, we're going to do, you know, this guy called us with this crazy offer, but you're going to represent us on this deal. You know, and, and there's a lot of, a lot of trust. Uh, you know, a, lo a lot of the shutdown you'll get when you're, when you're reaching out to these guys initially for them to sell is, Hey, no, we, you know, we, 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 we go back to the broker who, who, who brought us this deal. It's only, it's only right. You know, and, and it's the way it should be. So it's honest. kind of like, like one hand washes the other, you bring them a deal. They're going to take care of you later on. Especially when it's off market. Yeah, absolutely. Cause you could have took that thing to anywhere else, anyone else. You know, I try to tell people, I try to tell people that ask me all the time, like, Hey, how, how do I build the courage to go call, uh, you know, a group if, if I, if I have a, an off market opportunity or I have an opportunity for them and, and you just got to go do it because you, you know, if you're the guy with the deal, anybody's going to talk to you, especially if you're direct to the seller, you know, and there's no loopholes and it's like, you know, me calling you with a deal because I'm direct to the owner. No one else knows about it. Why wouldn't they talk to you? It's their job to make friends with brokers. I mean, that's that literally the acquisitions guy's job is, is to, is to be, you know, my best friend. And, 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 you know, he's, he's going to sleep at night praying every day that I call him first before I call someone else when I, when I find something. So interesting, man. So interesting. Well, man, kudos to you. <laughs> okay. We salute I, I, you, bro. We I, salute, I, I salute you. you no, know, it's a, you know, I, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm big on, uh, on, on doing research. So I've, obviously before I even, you know, jump on something like this and I don't do many podcasts, if any, mm. if any, I've probably done one or two because I, I don't naturally, uh, talk about myself. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I just, yeah. it's just not something I'm not going to say it's not something that, that, you know, you can do it without being, you know, we're uh, very similar, man. We're very similar. When I was the number one Remax agent in Alabama, nobody knew about it. I didn't even have yeah. a social media at all. The only reason I started social media in 2016, right? I had number one in 14, you know, and I'm going through all this stuff and losing everything, coming back and crushing it and, you know, all this and never said anything about it. The only reason I ever said anything about it was just to try to help people understand that I know what I'm talking about. Right. And I want to help you. Right. I, I wanted to leverage my experience and what I, the success I had just to try to turn around and help people. And without actually saying what I did, nobody's going to really even think that I have the credibility to even help them do what they want to do. If it wasn't for that, people still wouldn't know what I was doing over here, but I'm glad I did because now I have this global brand, right? I've got, it's just amazing. I mean, I've got, I've got agents all over, man, India, South Africa, Australia, 
you know, Mexico, Brazil, Canada, Portugal, you know, all over, all over reaching out to me, telling me, thank you so much for the free advice that they've taken and used to blow their business up, tri doubling and tripling their income and stuff, man. It's humbling. It's, I never even think, I never even thought it would go this far to be honest with you. So it's been a, it's been a cool ride. That's the best thing about it, right? You, 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 you don't, you just lay yeah. down the bricks and, and, and life unfolds in, in, in itself. Yeah. And next thing you know, you're, you're looking back and you're like, I get from here to there and, you, you know, <laughs> random, you know, random people reaching out to you that you probably never even spoke to like, Hey, you know, yeah, I know you don't know me, but you inspire me. It's like, you know, run home and show my wife. Did you see what this guy said about me? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's an amazing feeling. It's, it's definitely a humbling, uh, humbling feeling. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it, it, was, uh, it, was, it was an honor to, to chat with you today, man, and kind of pick your brain a little bit and kind of hear about all these, all these things that you got going on, man. Oh, man. It's just, to me, it's just amazing, right, on all my right. end. Right. Where, uh, is there anywhere you want people to follow you or connect with you or, uh, you know, um, hit you up if they have uh, referrals yeah. or anything of that uh, nature? Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, they can, they can find me on Instagram. It's, it's pretty easy. It's, it's at the David Cohen, um, you know, first name, last name. Um, and, and I'm always willing to help. I mean, you know, people reach out to me all the time for, for whatever it may be, you know, a lot, a lot of it is how, how do I go, you know, what, what do you have to say to a younger agent who, who wants to go do bigger commercial deals or whatever. And if they just shoot me a DM man, I answer everybody, um, you know, no time to be a dude. Every, uh, every time you say something, every time you say something, I'm like, that's me. Like I answer every <laughs> single, I answer every single DM. But yeah, I mean, look, man, that's how it's, it's, it should be. I look again, like a lot of these people, right. It's a, like, like we mentioned, it's a lot of fluff. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of fluff, you know, it's a, it's a lot of, you know, reach out to me so I can get, you know, get you to give me five grand for my two month coaching or whatever, or whatever. Yeah. Like, I mean, man, it, it's, you know, why not? I was, I was that, that kid who, who didn't have anyone to look up to, or, 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 I mean, let's not say anyone to look up to, but in, in my specific field, you know what I mean? Didn't have anyone to, to, to go forward until someone went ahead and, and said, you know what, come on, let's do it. You know, and, and so I'm sure, and, and this is, you know, this is, I'm in LA, right? So to go and find someone to do that is probably not as hard as, as it is for, for other people in other states uh, that are maybe more remote and, and less, um, you know, less, less multifamily driven or, 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 you know, big, broker driven uh brokerage houses than than i may have access to you know so so you know and and, and they see they see a, a you know younger guy just going ahead and do these things and i and i i understand what they're saying I, i'm sure it takes a, a lot of balls for them to, to to reach out in the first place you know so i try to make make it as comfortable as possible absolutely love it man david thank you so much for taking the time uh if oh, anyone wants to thank reach out guys. Reach out to him on Instagram and listen, we look forward to seeing you back in the future, man. We want to see uh, where your success is five, uh, 10 years from now. You're, you're going to keep I'd love, blowing it up. Absolutely. And I'll definitely keep in touch. Ricky, this is a, uh, you know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm thankful to, uh, to Carlos for putting us together. So I'll definitely keep in touch yeah. with you, man. I'd love to. Absolutely. Absolutely.